Quinn.com. Playboy Bunny. Mm-hmm. Mel Campbell, an orgy. Backstage yes. with the Rocky Horror cast. Barry, Barry Bos- Boswick. Boswick watching the His whole car. thing. He- <laughs> His car is- Welcome, friends and fans, to the GalaxyCon Live Rocky Horror Science Fiction Double Feature Virtual Q&A, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today we are indeed taking the time warp and going back to the planet transsexual with three amazingly talented guests. So without further ado, let's all take a jump to the left, hop patootie, bless our souls, and bring them out. Our first guest is an actress and singer whose credits include The Killing Fields, Great Expectations, and Rock Follies. Today she joins us to discuss the role of Columbia. Please welcome back the always lovely Nell Campbell. Treasures. Aww. How the hell are you all? Oh, Worldwide, and- fabulous. Here I am. A little askew in Sydney, Australia. I'll try and attempt to get my hair a little more. Okay. Hello, hello. It's marvelous to be here. Oh, it's always glad to have you back. Nell, how have you been? Darling, I have been rocking on in and out of lockdown. It's all the same to me. Living life large in a very small area. The circumference of my house and garden. Couldn't be happier. Would love to take this moment to wish the divine Marcello a very, very happy birthday from me and from Doug, and from Tony, no doubt, okay? So I just thought I'd share that with you. Doug and Tony are my very close fans and very close friends. And Marcello, you're a birthday boy. And what else can we discuss? I've got my Vegemite on toast here that I'm eating, which is Mm -hmm. absolutely delicious. It's 9 a.m. in the morning, and I'm dressed, you know, I I thought I'd wear this rather interesting attire for you. It's East East West. I, I, I think it's Each absolutely best. Dress home is best. It works. It absolutely works. Well, well, uh, indeed, you are fabulous as always. Is so glad to have you back. And <laughs> you're all the way over there on that side of the world. Let me bring out our next guest, who's actually in my time zone, a little bit north of me. He is a Tony and Golden Globe winning actor whose credits include the original cast production of Greece. Fantastic Planet, Megaforce, and Spin City. Today, he is back to just talk about playing the eternally bewildered Brad Majors. Please welcome back our friend, Barry Boswick. Hello, hello. I'm, you know, I'm still bewildered after 40-something <laughs> years. I, I haven't changed at all. I'm bewildered uh, that uh, Nell just took all of our 45 minutes for her introduction. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I, sweetie. Mwah. I I'm love trying, you so much. I'm trying. It's, it's you know a little early in the morning for me to be quite so gorgeous. But have you even brushed your hair, Treasure? Ah, uh, what's that? What? My your hair? hair? You brushed your hair? Did you say I've I've lost it or must it? She's I'm asked if you brushed, brushed it. it. Oh, I, I am. Uh, you know what? I'm, You've got uh, such a great head of hair. Who the hell cares? You I know. Yeah, well, thank you. You know, we uh, you're going into summer, right? That's correct. Yeah, but well, it looks beautiful behind you. You can see behind me. I'm in Florida, and Look, it's beautiful here too. I couldn't yeah. be happier here. Isn't no. that great? Right? Yeah, so, it's wonderful, and I want to see you personally very soon. You will, darling, because we Australians are finally being allowed to leave the country. After how long? After nearly, well, it'll be two years in March. Oh, my God. I'll tell you who is allowed to leave the country, though. Mm -hmm. If you are a film star or a billionaire, you they let them leave the country. I mean, the number of Hollywood stars that have come and gone is beyond. And um, But we mere mortals... Have to You're leave. a film star. You're a film star, damn it. Yes, you are. Right. Well, you've got to be a multi-millionaire film star. But, no, we um we had to leave for a minimum of three months if we were going away. Uh, and then we had to come back and do two two weeks of government lockdown, which the starting price was $4,000. Oh, to be in a hotel room with no no terrace or anything. And you're not allowed out of that room for $4,000 for two weeks. 
That's ridiculous. That's a crazy one, huh? Well, uh, Barry, glad to see you. Uh, Thank you. Well Happy with you. to be here. Uh, glad to have you back. How's the clock making business? Oh, it's great. I, you know, come on to my website. <laughs> <laughs> my website, BarryBostwick.com. I'm making clocks for Christmas. All these Rocky <laughs> Horror clocks and jewelry and everything. And uh, uh, did I mention BarryBostwick.com? Because <laughs> 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 guess what's coming up very soon? Little, yeah. Nell, little Nell Campbell com. Oh, good. Ooh. Yes. It's, why is it taking us so long? Um... <laughs> I don't know, darling. Yeah, got to come up with an idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. say in life, look, guys, there's no, you just, you can't cat whip, as my mother said. Don't, you've just got to accept when you get round to doing things, okay? Yeah. 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 In my dotage, I'm doing a lot of things. And speaking of doing things, I need to introduce our next guest. She is an actress whose credits include I, Claudius, <laughs> Doctor Who, and Hawk the Slayer. Today, she joins us to talk about the role of Magenta. Please welcome back the always entertaining Patricia Quinn. No, I'm sorry I've fallen asleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Barry and his miraculous hair will wake you up. I mean, Marmite and hair, you know. Hello, Patricia. I love you. Look at you. you light up when you smile. You well, we can't. We can't see out of my window because the curtains are drawn and it's bleak and autumn. It's also and night late and, that late and late. Yeah, but you have a beautiful view of the not hill. Low, but not at this time of night. I know, but it is that you do have a beautiful view, which is a marvelous thing. I know. Primrose Hill. It's such a lovely name to Primrose Hill. I know. That's why I've been here for such a long time. <laughs> my, my housemate has a guinea pig named Primrose, so there you go. Oh. <laughs> oh I love it. <laughs> Just like, Pat, how are you? How are you? Do you? Everything is good in your corner of the world? Yeah, well, I've so enjoyed now being locked down because she's had the most amusing daily like, lockdown day oh. 100, 1002. And I've been so entertained by her every day. Thank you, my Instagram. It's so brilliant. And um, I just asked her if she could be locked down a bit longer. You are a darling. <laughs> and, I, and the great news is, I'm continuing to live life as though I am, am still in lockdown, Pat. Oh, don't. I've become a I, love, I love your page. I'm just saying it's brilliant. Thank you, darling. Thank you. And it, it will continue because, I'm, as you know, I'm going through all my oh, archives. No. Wow. Can you, don't, don't you love all the funny things that are coming up? Yes. I mean, it's incredible. It's ordinary what you well, Not just about me. The, I, I, it, the things from my parents' library. <laughs> what, darling? Nothing. Well, I'm so anyway. glad. So glad you're active on that. Barry has a Facebook, but he never posts anything. No, I don't. And I got rid of my uh, Instagram, and I don't tweet. There was too many really? crazy people following me. <laughs> well, really. Yeah, Twitter, yeah. Twitter's a Twitter's a, 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 a oh, I talk about. Instagram's fairly yeah. safe because it's just pictures and you just leave it at that. Yeah, but you got all these <laughs> followers that you can't get rid of if they're like yes, really you crazy. You block them if they say weird things. Well, I can figure that out. My God, what are you thinking? Find that for children are for. No, Your no, children are in their twenties. No, 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 no. Darling, are, are they becoming dot coms? What does that mean? What's that? The dot com? Like BarryBostwick.com? Where that's, you can purchase like fine web. jewelry and get in clocks. And, and you fine. should get a website, Pat. Sorry? You don't have a website, Pat. You gotta get a website. It just just to tell your fans what's going on. I do. You know. I actually do have one. You just have missed it. Oh. Is that what okay. you mean by dot com? Pat is Quinn. Website? Yeah, patriciaquinn.com. Oh, is it? Oh. Yeah. There uh, is, is uh, someone. Someone set it up for me. I don't know about it. Okay. I have one. Good. All right. And I'm meant to sell things on it. Yes, yeah, sell things. Yes. I wonder what. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, oh, we, uh, that, that's that. Uh, okay. Anybody in the chat room wants to start suggesting things that uh, Pat, uh, Pat can sell at her website, and uh, we'll be glad to forward those along as long as they're not too scurrilous. <laughs> 
Feather <laughs> dusters. You should sell feather dusters. Oh. That's um, a good idea. Wise and, and, so young. and an apron with your signature on it. Or yeah. an apron with something, and it says um, mag something like magenta, um, I banged riffraff in this apron or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you oh. go. Shirts and stuff like that. There's lots of things, lots of things. Uh, well, friends, thank, once again, thank you for joining us here on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. As always, it's a pleasure to absolutely have everybody here today. Glad to see everybody in good health and in good spirit. And, and you, breakfast. Absolutely. We're doing a Vegemite breakfast and everything else. So if we've got some questions, I'll tell Paul, a producer, let's go ahead and roll our first one. And this comes from Joshua. And he wants to know, uh, what is your funniest behind-the-scenes memory? And... I will allow you to draw from anything in your career. You're not uh, limited to just Rocky Horror. Oh, he what well, this person Joshua wants Rocky Horror, I'm sure. Probably, but if you've got a story. Pat, you, like, Pat, I'm sure you've got a brilliant memory for that. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Isn't that like this is this is sad. I think I I better make something up. Wait there. Uh, um <coughs> Well, how about when we were in the pool kissing each other's bodies underwater? Yeah, that was just cold. I think. That wasn't <laughs> funny at all, was it? That yeah, I think you guys were freezing your tuchuses off, weren't you? Yeah, and when we got out of the water and were slipping and sliding on that stage doing that. I sip. still can't believe that they uh, we had to, you know, dance in wet shoes like that. On that stage, in all my I was amazed that I had nothing to do with that. Astonishing. What good luck. <laughs> it's interesting that you and Riff Raff were not involved in that. Mm. I agree. Yeah, yeah, I think you need to talk to, um, I think it might be a little late for a rewrite, but otherwise. You see, you're probably yeah. banging Riff Raff. Pardon? You were, you know, a little incest goes a long way. And who's to know if you really were a brother? I, I never had incest with my brother. And he might not have been your actual brother. Pardon? Could but you know where they do that in movies? They say, oh, my brother's coming to visit. They actually do that. My brother. And people, oh, oh okay. Oh, no, no. I was there when it was being written. Yes, I know, darling. I'm just, <laughs> just having yeah. a wee guest. Well, I'm confused. Was it your actual brother or not? Yes. Yes, it was your brother. Well, well okay. Okay. I mean, Riff Raff. It's heavy. Riff Raff is your brother. He's certainly not heavy, yeah. Richard O'Brien. Hmm. He's her brother. <clears throat> there you go. We've established that. Joshua, thank you. Fun question. Sorry. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we didn't Joshua. answer it. Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> well, she didn't have a memory. <laughs> Why did Barry, you just agreed that the water and freezing your ass off was enough. So There was nothing funny about it. <laughs> and also this, you know, imagine trying to have an orgy underwater where you can't breathe and um, you've got all these cameras on you and you're freezing cold. It was extraordinary. Yeah. It was brilliant. Yeah. Thank you, what? darling. I mean, I, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, had one. the idea, and of course it was Jim Sharman yet again. Pat, were you in that orgy we had backstage at the theatre once? <gasps> doing rock I horror. did two orgies. Well, it's the only orgy I've ever had, been to, and we, did, we had an orgy backstage between oh, shows oh. at the Rocky and doing Rocky Horror. I think you must have been in Soldo by then. You may have, you, so you would have left. Darling, I left at the Chelsea Classic. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Were you doing filthy things at the Soldo? Well, we had this one orgy. What is an <laughs> orgy? What is it? A, what's a backstage orgy? Well, everyone in the show, well, you know, killing time, we decided to have an orgy. And what did you do? The usual things you do in orgies. I've never been to one. What do you do? It's because you're having sex. You're oh, having no, Pat, you were an I, Claudius. You know exactly what, a, what an orgy is. <laughs> were you doing it? Well, you were either doing it or variations of it. There was at least seven of us involved. Could you name them? No. <laughs> what year was it? 
Was your Brad involved? I said I'm not naming names. Uh, oh, thank you, Joshua. Great question. You know exactly what do we have next? Us. I think that's just very uh, indiscreet. Uh, what is? You made it up. Well, we'll say, uh, sa save no, that. Save that I did for not make that, that up. <laughs> I, I, know, I, I think you I'll, just tell him, I'll tell you more details. Uh, you know, one on one. We're, we're, we're all we're all theater people here. We all know it could have happened. And I'll take, I, I'll take her. I'm yes, sorry. I'm I, not I, I, such a ghastly thing. Ghastly. Are you kidding? We're doing the Rocky Horror yeah. Show. Come on, Richard O'Brien. You mean Richard, he, he did, it, did you do it with him? I'm not saying another word about it. I've never heard this story. I love it. I love it now. Well, you're all kind of dirty. Oh, God. What's can dirty? I, I, can nothing, I, can... There's nothing dirty about an orgy. There's nothing There's dirty about right, an from... sexual, as long as everyone is, you know, happy to do it. Yeah. Consensual, I believe, is the unbelievably dreary word that one has to listen to all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you guys a question? Because I wasn't there. I was only in the movie. On opening night uh, at Upstairs, where you did this play, musical, uh, what was that opening night like? Was it uh, tense? Was it just fun? What was, was it, uh, what was it like, that opening night? That'll be for me. What's that? That'll be for me. That phone call. <laughs> <laughs> no, my car is ready to get picked up. <laughs> oh, my God. You're not bringing this into your mundane. I'm telling you about orgies, and you're discussing your car your, is ready to be picked well, up. Well, I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, that, The mundanities of Florida life, darling. I love it. I love it. I'm loving it here. No, I love that you're loving it there, too. Okay. So, so opening so night. Opening, opening night, night, opening night on stage. What was it like? Exciting. It was, For me, exciting. It was like my first show in London. Was, was it the second show I'd ever been in? And I was absolutely thrilled. And I, it has to be said that when you're young, you know, because whatever I was, 23 or 24, 23, I think, you don't get as nervous. Yeah. Do you feel the same, Pat? No, I, I don't get nervous. I get so nervous now. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So it was very well received. It, it was well received? Oh, yes. And yeah, did you get a lot we of... Hit, uh, we were a hit from the minute the Asherette walked on. Yes. We were stunning. Wow. It was stunning. It was unbelievably was wonderful. It was so brilliant, Pat, you being the Asherette. But the whole thing was... Magic. It was magic. It was one. Yeah. And within a week, you know, you had Nuriev coming through, trying to get in and going past me in the dressing room late and saying, excuse me, do you mind if I go through? I said, no, not at all. <gasps> well, as long as you do a grand jeté on the way yeah, back. That's right. It was wonderful. <laughs> that was in, within the first week. It was, it was Can I add to that, Pat, that because... Um, people don't who have you know a lot of people might not realize that the show began the lights went down and Pat Pat walks down the aisle looking like a an usherette selling ice cream. No, I which, didn't do that. Sorry. No. I uh, think you walk down the aisle. Well, it, did the light came no, up on you? No, no. The whole point of why it became why the set exists as a set was it was a made as a cinema because we'd somewhere to put the band which was behind the cinema screen. That, uh, yeah. reason, like that I remember. There were all but... reasons for this. Set. Oh, sorry, I'm thinking of the next theater. And my my um, usherette was under sitting on the stage, uh, sitting in the sixty seat room with a gauze cloth over her, and the audience were walking in, passing me, and doing that. They didn't know what I was. I was just this thing on a chair in this right. club. And the whole reason, so they used ushers, which was O'Brien and yourself and whatever, to put people into their seats. This was all for a reason. The reason is we didn't have a curtain. 
<clears throat> couldn't afford a curtain and there wasn't a curtain in the 60 seat room so they came we to my, my, they came to my um, <clears throat> thing at shroud and said glad you could come tonight that's right stood up <laughs> as a usherette at a cinema and sang the <clears throat> fiction that that was all due to it was amazing in that it was um necessity the mother of invention had so Indeed. much to do with all of it but also i want people to know <clears throat> that at that time in 1973 cinemas and theaters had these had usherettes so you were dressed at you know you looked like somebody that worked out the no, sorry i actually was a usherette there you have it Mm -hmm. You were a, a you were up. the Notting Hill Gate classic where oh, I had a nice tray and sold ice creams and showed people to their seats. There you that are. My job. There you are. Were you a, weren't you a bunny also? Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, you were a bunny. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Yeah. Yes, the, with the weigh-ins. Money ball. Where they, I was uh, the club. opening of the Playboy Club in London. And I thought, oh, I'll go for that. I'll go and see these Playboy people. And it was <clears> an opening. And um, they said you had to wear a swimsuit and high heels. And I walked up and down in that. And they said, uh, Blackjack, croupier. I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> can, you still, can you still do the, whole, the old croupier action? No, no, of course not. That really takes training. That well, that's what I would think. So how long did it, anyway, I'm not, I don't want to, but that interests me. How long did that take to learn to be a croupier? Oh, yeah. ages. That's any photograph I've got in the Playboy magazine. Nothing um, just in my hat and on the table training to do the shoot. Yeah. Oh, you know. oh, post that on Instagram. That wow. photo sounds fabulous. The fans absolutely it, as would I. So let's get you. Let's get her hooked up with an Instagram. And there we've already. We're already adding. We're gonna figure out stuff to add to the pay of Playboy Bunny, mm -hmm. Mel Campbell, an orgy backstage yes. with the Rocky Horror cast. Barry Bostwick watching the his whole car, thing because he <laughs> his car is ready to be collected. <laughs> uh, all right, Joshua, you got your answer and then some. <laughs> all right, what do we have next? Uh, here's one from Anonymous. Uh, what is everybody's favorite song from Rocky Horror? Oh. First of all, why anonymous? No, it's not like you. it's not like some question that uh, you know he could be jailed for. It's not. I want to know that person's name. I'm that not going to answer it until anonymous tells me who she or he is. Their okay. name might be anonymous. Hmm. Their name may well be anonymous. Oh, there's no anonymouses in this world. There are. You keep saying really? that with all your sibilant s's. Uh, it was very well, good. Uh, you did well with that, darling. All right. <laughs> I missed that all joke, right. but anyway. I, I I'm at, it must be, it's a Latin name, isn't it? Latin word, anonymous. Or, or that. certainly the Moa Massa Matt. Um, uh -huh. okay, <laughs> you were a Latin student? Matt, I think you're, yes. I was too, actually. That was my favorite class in Who high school. Moa Massa Matt. Yeah. Yours too? That's I love you, the ver being, you know, verbalized. Yeah. My father was a Greek and Latin scholar at Oxford University. No kidding. He was, in fact, a, a Rhodes Scholar. Oh, my God. Well, my son's at Cambridge now. In fact, I've got all these books right next to me, all these Latin and these amazing books. All his, Look at all these old. Can you see? Oh, and, yeah. And then these are his books. And um, where, where did you study? I'm going through, you know, That's my language. And, and, you know, my sister's name is Cressida. Shakespeare. What no. He, well, he's got all these books from when he was a um, 
Shakespeare and Latin. Uh, Oh, you know, these he, awards that he would win sometimes when he was at school to then, and then he became a Rhodes Scholar. He never understood why. Look at this one. Hmm. 1910 is the date. Wow. Okay. Um, which is that was that he was born, I believe, in 1910. Yeah. Anyway, so that, but anyway, they're beautiful books. Obviously. Um. So anonymous. Oh, I well, I love Pat singing science fiction. <laughs> I did. I think it was so touching, and it, it was a, it was beautiful when you used to sing that song at the oh, opening of the film. Fine. Thank you. Oh, I loved it too because it was a wonderful idea for a Nasherette to be singing about her favorite movies. Yeah, and we all always think of Nasherettes having such unfulfilled dreams. That's why I was a Nasherette. But your dreams were fulfilled. I wanted to see all the films, so I uh, thought I'd go into the cinema. I was a Nasherette in the theatre as well, so I could see everything that was on the West End. Such a clever idea. Mm. I, I, wasn't, I, that the, uh, sorry, wasn't that the first song that Richard O'Brien wrote for this? And he wrote it before he even wrote the musical? Yes. He wrote so, it for... Um, he. Hmm. Um, did it entertain technicians, film technicians at some thing at Elstree or something, and he wrote that song just to entertain them, not for a show. Okay. You know, I was reminded recently that um, you remember. I don't know if, if our if our listeners, readers, observers, but know that uh, Jim Sharman, prior to directing Rocky Horror, had directed. Uh, Jesus Christ Superstar in the West End, which Richard O'Brien was in, correct? Yeah. Well, and he wanted to play Herod as Elvis Presley. <laughs> yeah. And he I wasn't know. allowed. And 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 the person who was writing this said he was he was then fired. I don't know if that's absolutely true. It was no he, as Herod. Pardon? They didn't reckon him as Herod. No. Mm. Nothing to do with Elvis at all. But I, it's but so he was, in hair. he was in the hair with Mr. Sharman as well. Right. But then he, when he had the, when he, he got fired or something, he got fired or something, and he spent the whole winter writing this because he was had I nothing else to do. Winter. Well, whatever, yeah. whatever it was, the time after he was out of the show, he didn't get yes. Jesus Christ Herod, so he started writing it. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh. There's the, there we are. He wasn't hired. It, he wasn't he fired. He just wasn't hired. I see. I just remember a little story about when uh, Richard O'Brien was bring, said to Jim Sharman at the time, uh, "I have this show I'd like you to read or like you to." And, and Jim Sharman says, "It's not a religious show, is it?" And Richard <laughs> said, "No, no." And and I think that's one of the reasons why it was actually. Cottoned, you know, why it was actually uh, approved by Jim Sharman and liked it because oh. Jim Sharman was so sick of religious rock and roll well, shows, you know. Fair. He'd only done Jesus Christ Superstar. There was he didn't do Joseph and his Technicolor dream coat. The, no, uh, Technicolor, Technicolor dream coat, yeah, yeah. And then get Godspell God, being the third. Jesus Christ Superstar. That's enough. That's a lifetime of religion. That is, yeah. Hmm. I'm a Godspell man myself, just because. Oh my God, look at this is just getting worse. <laughs> um, before we go on, I would just like to ask are any of the people, Patty, Patty, Pat, and Barry, <laughs> does anyone believe in God? Oh, I'm God. Not so. Yeah, I mean, I but but my kind of God, which is an internal, uh, most of, more of a Buddhist, uh, you know, point of view. But uh, no, I don't, uh, I don't believe in probably what the Catholics uh, believe in. Uh, yeah, I'm much more Eastern religion oriented. Do you think there is any bigger, bigger thing, greater being? I, I think. I, I think it's a consciousness uh, thing, not a, not an entity. Yeah. Well, I think uh, yes. Well, it's and a week for uh, nine a.m. in the morning in Australia, 
Well, Reggie, might and God. Pat, were you, <coughs> Pat, were you brought up a Catholic? I don't discuss it. Okay. Fair if you have any idea, you know I was, I was brought up and born in Belfast, Northern Ireland, and we don't discuss religion. Oh well, that I mean, I'm, I'm as I when I asked the question, I was aware it was a, a bit of a um volatile from a Belfast girl for a Belfast. No, God girl. is not. I, I was talking mm. about religion. No, I'm, I realise that, but obviously the well, Catholics. God are else. Yeah. Now, anyway. can I? Now, ask uh, you asked the question. Would you answer it for yourself? I don't believe in God at all. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I believe in kindness, which is sort of what you're saying, Eastern more. I right. think by kindness, doing things for other people, that's the most important thing. And right. doing yoga, <laughs> looking after yourself in that regard, but looking after others. Mm -hmm. And uh, I cannot believe that people still believe in that there is a God. And all the time, all the wars in the world usually have started because of God's religion. Right, right. And first of all, if someone does believe in some another God, who cares what they believe in? It's like your sexuality in a way, except the sexuality you don't have a choice in, but as we know in certain countries you're brought up in, in strict religions and they just get brainwashed. And it's just, to me, they're all cults. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the amount of time people waste having to be, you know, at the churches, the synagogues, the mosques. Anyway. Can I just say something? You know, you ruin it for people. They have a wonderful time at those places. I thought you just left the room, Paddy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's, what's as interesting about this conversation is this is the kind of conversations we have when we're alone or in a restaurant somewhere at a convention. You know, it's, it's not about... Have a conversation about this. We know, but things like this, not not you know, I mean, things that are a little deeper than just uh, you know, uh, what's he your favorite? Song? It. Who did? Uh. 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 <laughs> I know, no, but what I'm there. saying is, what I'm saying is, I think we've all gone beyond the Rocky Horror thing in some way. Well, you our know. darling fans know us quite well now. I think they want to, you know, know a bit more about us, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I, I agree with yeah. you. Mm. I agree with you. Uh, Patty, get us yes. off this goddamn thing and put us on a question about Rocky Horror. Come on. My, uh, I just want to say my 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 my, uh, my personal savior is Emily Post. So I just want to. Oh, make I that. love oh. it. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> this is big. Why is that next to you, for God's sake? <laughs> oh, uh, cause, I, because I, because because I because I'm a host and I have to do this. And this is a 1928 edition too, so this is really fun. Dead to rights, I should be sending you uh, thank you letters after you appear this night, not emails, <laughs> thank you letters and everything is it else. Illustrated. Uh, is it illustrated? Oh, there are lots of there are there are illustrations on there are actual like early photos of place settings and yeah, oh, things. Show us, show us an illustration, please. Oh, all right. And only if you answer Anonymous's question, which was, we got uh, Nels, but Pat and Barry, what is your favorite Rocky Horror song? Uh, 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 the one uh, the one that Tim sings at the end. What is that one where he's sitting on the edge of the stage? I'm going home. I'm going home. I think that's well, a that whole thing. I think it's a, what? Here's a diagram for a formal dinner setting. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> I love all that. Where the host have is have you ever seen the Queen's staff setting up a dinner? Her um No, I've only sat at the table. Pat, the you party or arrival. What do you call I uh, start with the footman? The footman set up the table with a ruler. They, you know, everything is measured how far apart each thing is. Yes. Speaking of time wasting. <laughs> but Pat, how, how did your dinner go with the Queen? Tell us about it. Great not. I can't, <laughs> I can't talk about that. Okay. All right, Pat. He's not interviewing Meghan Markle here. Mm. Come on. Nothing? She, she, uh... Next. <laughs> uh, still, I, still a... under her, under Pat, Pat, I still need a song for you, and I promise we'll move on. No. A song. Yes, wait, yeah, favorite, favorite, favorite song. Oh, sorry. From 
Um, let me think. No, I like science fiction. Sorry. All right, good. That's I like it. all of them. Honest to goodness, I think they're all. all... Right. Me all right. too. Love I, them all. Science fiction is wonderful. I, I enjoy I enjoy having to explain all the references to the youngins nowadays. Well, there was this movie called Day of the Triffids, and then there's this movie called The Day the Earth Stood Still. And yeah, let's roll another one. Is this uh, Ezra James? Ah, uh, did any of you uh, keep anything from the set of the film? Or I'll expand it. Have you all kept anything from any of the stage versions? I found this today, and this is from my space suit. Really? What is that? I can't see. Uh, it's, it's my. That was on my space suit. Oh my That's god! That's from Rocky Horror. I never kept anything ever in my life from anything, and I what? thought. What is that? It was in the, is it from the film. Yeah, that is great. It's a tachyo thing. I polished oh. it to wear oh. today because I thought it's it's very it's science fiction, isn't it? It's fantastic. It is, yeah. That's yeah. Great that you have that. People I have are, that. Oh. How I've even got that is extraordinary because I I never took anything I ever thought to. I never with. In you know, like um, Prowse um, from uh, Star Wars, David Prowse, who's just recently died. You know, he has so much memorabilia and things that there's auctions and auctions going on. They're that, about to do a really huge estate sale for him really soon. Yes. Yeah. Julian's involved in that. Anyway, so the point is, and um, his script went for three hundred thousand pounds. And wow. it's about so 450 American. Is, I know, but I never ever thought of um, I didn't ever think of I've got my script, place. I've got my Rocky Horror script. I don't really think it's worth that. Pardon? I don't think it's worth that. No, no, um, I'm, it's, I'm keeping it anyway. But listen, I've got this theory, guys. Tell me what you think that you're the first. People, I'm work, I'm going to try it on. Well, as you know, Elon Musk recently flew to space with William Shatner and some other folk, a few other folk, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you may also know that tragically, one of those people was killed in a small plane crash yeah. two days ago. Yeah, irony, unbelievable. And I was thinking, now it's not just because I am reading Agatha Christie's autobiography at the moment, but it's how about if slowly each of the people were on that flight died? Oh, my God, you're very worrying. And, it, and it's like an extraterrestrial situation. Uh -huh. They went where they shouldn't have been. Why didn't you just write the book and keep that to yourself? I'm not just about to, live you to give it away. No, just an idea. Well, Shatner will make a lot of money off of it. That's all I can say. <laughs> Most unpleasant man I've ever met at any convention in, in, in front of house, back of house, in the house. I right? absolutely adore Mr. Shatner. There you go. He's one of the most delightful I've ever met. S sorry you haven't had... A good, good experience with him. Uh, we've we've had him on here several times, and he's been he's been great, great to me and to us. So and to me, we'll try to maybe we'll maybe we'll try to rectify that someday. I'm very uh, very very amusing, very bright. But it's Nell, awesome. I am I am in awe that you actually have your original True Blue uh, uh, script still from the film. Mm. That's I have my, so I do have I. My, I have mine too. I, really, I have my uh, script as a show and the original film. I've wow. got both of them, and I had the bra from the 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 Rocky Horror Show. Oh wow! They wouldn't let us, if I remember the last day. They didn't want us take to take anything, is because they were going to give them back to whoever they rented them from, or or because they didn't have what was the budget on the costumes on this thing? Oh, Pat, didn't you say it was like a you know eleven hundred pounds? I know nothing about it. No. The 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 it budget. Money. Yeah. Mm. I don't know the answer. Sorry. It was very and it was very small amount. But it never occurred to me to take anything. Of course, had we known, I'd have taken the lot and Oh yeah, me too. 
you know, yeah. lived, with what I, lived with the repercussions or I would have happily paid for them all. Yeah. But we were all, I was being paid so little money for the film. I could have been just given the whole goddamn thing outfit of mine. Again, I didn't want it. Why would I want that? <laughs> well, I, I, wasn't thinking, I wasn't thinking like Mr. Praz that one could eventually sell it. Do you see what I mean? It's different. Yeah. Mm. If, the, if, 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 if there was one thing each of you could have kept uh, from the set, proper costume wise, what would it have been? My underwear. Right. <laughs> right. I because my, now I now I sell my underwear on yes, my website, BarryBoswick.com. Oh. You shouldn't be saying it's the original square <laughs> each time. Now this is the original pair. <laughs> I would um, I would have liked to have kept my my jacket and and top hat, my tails and and hat, yeah. and tap That's shoes. Fair. Yeah, there you go. You didn't even keep your tap shoes? What, what don't are you, be accusing. No? Don't be accusing. You know the person we've just, you know this, but one of the costume girls did nick my um, corset, my sequined corset. Oh, oh and Larry Vizel has it now, right? I know, and she sold it to Larry and put an extension on her house. Wow. <laughs> Seriously? It was oh, that? It was yeah. that what do you mean costume girls? One of the girls that worked in the wardrobe department of the Rocky Horror Picture Show nicked my corset. I didn't know anybody worked in a wardrobe department. What do you mean? The people that work in the wardrobe department on movies. I didn't think we had one. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we had one. Anyway, I was just so impressed she nicked it. And I'm so thrilled that she, uh, you know, made such good money out of it. And I'm thrilled, too, that someone as fabulous as Larry Weisel has it, owns it now. Sorry, what was it? My cor my sequined corset. Yeah. Larry Weisel is the head of the fan club in the United States, by the way, if anybody needs to know that. Okay. <laughs> he is he's like a the, lovely he's man. A, he's a the lovely, ex lovely man. He's the expert. He knows more about Rocky Horror Picture Show than not not Patricia. Patricia knows more than anybody, but certainly That's more true. than <laughs> the rest of us. You were there all the time, no? And Pat, you no, I have no memory. Pat, you, darling, should absolutely write a book. And yeah. I've told you a billion times. You've got so many great stories about not just Rocky Horror, your whole life. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. James, there you go. And GalaxyCon viewers, this has been my time with the cast of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, but it absolutely does not have to be yours. If you'd like to chat with our guests like I have today or purchase a personalized autograph, please sign up at GalaxyCon.com. And while you're there, we invite you to check out our schedule of upcoming events just like this one. Uh, guys, as always, this has been an absolute delight. Any final words before we take our leave? I'm shocked it's over. I know, I know. We're having Sorry. such a good time. Yeah, Patty, Patty, thank you. Patty, there. thank you so much, Patty. You've always been with us forever and ever and ever, and you know, know so I'm much about this. Enthusiastic. And your hair is so divine, your little perky face. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you all. And your book on etiquette, 1920s edition. <laughs> it's divine. Show us one more illustration. Go on quickly. All right, ladies, I have an image for you for the book of etiquette, just for you. Uh, it's a house rule according to her. All right, it's a. Uh, it is perfectly in a perfectly managed house. A woman guest, if she so desires, may have breakfast in bed. So oh the next my, that is great! I've got and to teach my magenta. Magenta certainly knows about that. <laughs> So, so the next time you ladies join us at one of our GalaxyCon live shows, uh, I am now obligated to provide breakfast in bed for you for at least one of the mornings. Thank and, you. And I want to be part of the orgy, uh, okay? Okay. <laughs> I miss that. Uh, I love you guys. <laughs> BarryBoswick.com. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, that's it. Once again, thank you for joining us on the Galaxy Sky Virtual Stage. As always, I love you all. Don't so, so, so. Bye, darling. Once Bye. more, happy birthday, Marcello.
Mm. Hello, Doug, darling, and Tony, who I couldn't even do anything without these days. Mm. They are so helpful to me. We will see everyone again soon. Until then, bye-bye, everyone. Take care, and remember, smiles Yay. are free. Spend them often.